Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. Today we're taking a look at a very special video card. It is nothing other than the 3DFX Voodoo 4 4500. So a while ago we tested the Voodoo 3 on the channel. Now the Voodoo 3 is a extremely popular video card for retro gaming. The VGA output is excellent. It is very compatible with both Windows and DOS games and the performance is excellent, especially in games supporting the Glide API. But compared to the competition at the time, it had a few weaknesses. For example, it cannot render 32-bit colors in 3D games. It doesn't support high-resolution textures and it only has 16 megabytes of video memory. The chip we're looking at here is the VSA100 and that stands for Voodoo Scalable Architecture. The idea was pretty straightforward. Produce a single chip and then make video cards with one, two and four chips that offer higher performance at higher price segments. So the Voodoo 4 4500 is the weakest card with just a single VS100 chip. Here we have the Voodoo 5 5500 and we can see two VSA100 chips on this video card. Planned but never released to consumers was the Voodoo 5 6000 with a total of four VSA100 chips. Now the technical complexities of getting four chips to work proved very difficult and before 3FX was able to solve all the issues and launch a product, it ran out of money and the company was acquired by NVIDIA. Too many the Voodoo 4 4500 is what the Voodoo 3 should have been from the get-go. It now has 32 megabytes of video memory. The VGA output is still excellent. The card now supports 32-bit colors in 3D games and also high-resolution texturing as well as having really nice looking full scene anti-aliasing which is especially useful for older games that run at a fixed resolution of for example 640x480 like Wing Commander Prophecy. But the Voodoo 4 4500 has one more feature that sets it apart from all or most of the other 3DFX Voodoo cards. And to find out what that is, let's take a closer look at the system that I've been using for this project. So this is probably not what you expect to see in combination with a 3DFX Voodoo card. Usually you would go for something like a Pentium 3, which is a very good match for a Voodoo 3 or a Voodoo 4. But what we have here is much more modern. This is AMD's Socket 754 platform and you can use CPUs like an Athlon 64 or an AMD Sempron. In fact, we're using an AMD Sempron 3100 Plus which runs at 1.8 GHz, making this a very fast and capable machine for Windows 98 retro gaming. Now if you take a Voodoo 3 and you try to install it onto this mainboard, you can see it doesn't fit. It's missing a key here. And that has a good reason. This mainboard uses an AGP specification that is more modern compared to what the Voodoo 3 uses. And this is the reason why most people that use a Voodoo 3 use an older generation of computer like a Pentium 3 or maybe an AMD Athlon. Now the Voodoo 4, however, does fit into this AGP slot just fine. The issue lies also with voltages. The more modern mainboards use a voltage of 1.5 and the Voodoo 4 is compatible with this, whereas the older Voodoo 3 cards need 3.3 volts. Now, um, I'm going to be careful here because there might be an exception out there, but for most cards, the Voodoo 4 4500 is the only uh, AGP video card from 3DFX that is compatible with more modern mainboards. You can always get the PCI version, but they are usually harder to find, more expensive, and in the case of the Voodoo 5, also not as fast. And therefore, because the Voodoo 4 4500 is compatible with more modern systems, it is a really good candidate 
to use in a time machine. When I say time machine, it means you taking a machine that's a little bit more modern than the software you want to uh, run on this machine for the purpose of having uh, modern conven conveniences. For example, being able to use uh, USB input devices, faster storage, compatibility with ATX power supplies and cases and so on. So the main board we're using today is from Gigabyte. It is the GA-K8VM800M. We have the AMD Sempron 3100 Plus processor running at 1.8 gigahertz and also a 256 megabyte DDR RAM module. I have flashed the latest BIOS and because this is a gigabyte board, make sure you press Control F1 to activate some hidden features. Next up, I load the BIOS defaults and then I disable a couple of integrated peripherals that we don't need. For example, I don't need Ethernet, I don't need the serial and the parallel ports. They will free up some pressures, interrupts and resources. And also I disabled USB 2.0. All we need is uh, USB 1 or 1.1 for a USB mouse and a keyboard. This particular main board has a chipset from VIA and although I had some really good experiences with them, they can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what to watch out for. Specifically, I ran into issues using the SATA ports. So my solution was disable the SATA ports in the BIOS and we're just going to use the IDE ports. For storage, we're using a solid state drive today. This one is from Silicon Power with 60 gigabytes and I'm using a SATA to IDE converter and the performance was excellent. I throw up some benchmark results on the screen. For our Windows 98 retro gaming PC, we definitely need an optical drive. Also uh, handy when it comes to installing Windows 98. So this gets its own IDE ribbon cable connected to the secondary IDE interface. It is configured as a master device and you will also need a audio cable to connect to your sound card. And speaking of sound, we have nothing other than Diamond's Monster Sound MX300 with the Oriel Vortex 2 audio processor. And this is a fantastic sound card for Windows 98 Retro Gaming. A lot of the games that use the Glide API also support the A3D Audio API. And this is where the sound card really shines. And for power, I'm using a VS350 from Corsair. I really like this power supply. It never let me down. And it's got all the legacy connectors like Molex and also the floppy power connector. And also I'm using a standard USB keyboard and a USB mouse for this project. Installing Windows 98 is pretty straightforward. Head to the WinWorld website and grab the OEM version. That one is bootable. You burn it onto a CD and off you go. I then partitioned and formatted the SSD and then installed Windows 98. I'm using an automatic answer file to speed up the installation. I will put a card on the screen. Um, I've done a video on how to do that. After Windows 98 was installed, the VIA chipset drivers are next. I'm using version 4.55 because that's what's available on the Gigabyte website. It does automatically enable the DMA mode for storage. Next up, we have the video drivers and I will put the version information on the screen. The drivers, those are the latest reference drivers from NVIDIA, they installed just fine, but I ran into an issue that I've seen on many machines, especially on many monitors, in my case, a capture card. And that is that you can't change the resolution to something higher. Sometimes the driver even doesn't install properly if you're using a certain monitor. And what I do is manually choose a monitor until all the resolutions unlock properly. So I went into the device manager and I tried out a few models. And in the end, I went with the Samsung Sync Master 900 SL. That did the trick. It unlocked all the resolutions up to 1600 by 1200, which is what I wanted for this project. For sound, we're using the driver version 2041. There are various uh, versions of that driver. Specifically, I'm using the one without PCI detection. 
and also without Sound Blaster support because all I want to use this machine for is Windows 98 games. I then tweak the mixer settings, muting all the inputs so we have a nice clean output and then I'm installing Dart X7. In 3D Mark 99 Max, we're getting 7,049 3D Marks and 39,094 CPU 3D Marks. So we can clearly see just how capable this processor is and it ensures that the video card um, is 100% utilized. And now let's have a look at some benchmark results. Now, these benchmarks are from a different system that I've been testing uh, many, many years ago, a Pentium 3 running at 1.1 gigahertz, but it's perfectly fine to use for this comparison. And we can see here in Unreal Gold, the uh, performance of the Voodoo 3 2000, the Voodoo 4 4500, and also the Voodoo 5 5500, and how it scales as you crank up the resolution. And the Voodoo 4 4500 is roughly at the same performance level of a Voodoo 3 3000, so the Voodoo 3 2000 is a little bit behind, and you can see that in this game, up to around 1024 by 768, you get a fairly decent experience. In Unreal Tournament, we're seeing a similar picture with 63 FPS at 1024 by 768. I did include Forsaken, an older game, and you can see you can play this game even at 1600 by 1200. Draken was interesting. There is a driver glitch at 1020 uh, at 1280 by 1024. It just crashes and does not produce a benchmark result. This game is more demanding on the video card. Um, at 1024 by 768 it won't quite reach 60 fps so that's a game you might want to play at 800 by 600. The 3 dfx Voodoo 4 4500 has full OpenGL support and the 3DFX cards are fairly decent in OpenGL. In Quake 2 you can play this game very comfortably at 1024 by 768 and also in Quake 3 which is uh, quite a bit more demanding especially if you enable 32-bit colors. We will take a look at some games shortly. There's one more feature I want to point out and that is anti-aliasing. This is a setting you enable in the video driver. Now on the Voodoo 4 4500 you can only enable 2xAA. On the Voodoo 5 5500 you can also use 4xAA. And this works in all the games. So you enable it in the driver, driver and it's a set and forget option. The performance impact is yeah quite substantial. So it depends on what games you're playing. Probably not that useful for uh, FPS games. But games where the fill rate is not so much an issue like uh, racing games or maybe some space games like Wing Commander Prophecy that are uh, that have a resolution that is fixed to 640 by 480 or 800 by 600 that is a killer feature that makes a lot of these old games look quite substantially nicer. The Voodoo 4 4500 also supports 8-bit palleted textures. Here we have Final Fantasy 7 the demo running. It's a good test to see if your video card is compatible with some of the older games. And now let's have a look at some games running in action. First we have Tomb Raider 2. This is with the 32-bit color option enabled. This game is not very demanding, uh, locked at 30 FPS as well, and the Voodoo 4 handles it just fine. Next up we have Unreal with the Glide API and 16-bit colors. Beautiful looking game. So on the Voodoo cards, uh, Unreal is just definitely a game you should be playing. If you're interested, you can buy these games, uh, Unreal and Unreal Tournament, from GOG. Install it on your modern machine, copy the folder across to your retro PC, delete the nGlide files, and you have a fully working copy for Windows 98. Here we have Unreal Tournament running with the Glide API. This one has an option in the menu to choose 32-bit colors, and yep, seems to be running just fine at 1024 by 768. Incoming is next. This is a direct 3D game, supports 32-bit colors. And this was a game that was 
often used to show the advantage of NVIDIA over 3DFX because the Voodoo 3 couldn't display 32-bit colors. The Voodoo 4 can, and it's got enough power to run this game at 1024 x 768 without any render errors. I mention that because if you have a video card that is uh, like a GeForce and newer, it will render incorrectly on NVIDIA cards. You need to use a TNT or a TNT 2. Rune is next. That's another game you can get from GOG. You have to look under the extras and there's the there's like a separate download for the legacy version. Uses the Glide API, 16-bit colors at 1024 by 768 and runs perfectly smooth. This is Screamer 4x4 using the Glide API, 16-bit colors and 800 by 600 resolution. Also runs well on this machine. I did also test the direct 3D render at the same resolution with 16-bit colors. I put them side by side. I couldn't get uh, frame rate readings because under Glide that isn't really possible. So, yep, have a look. See if you spot any differences. Let me know if you do in the comments. I always test Expendable. This is a really nice looking and one of the more demanding direct 3D games. We're using 32-bit colors. and. On the Voodoo 4, we now see high resolution textures being supported. So if you put games side by side on the Voodoo 3 compared to Voodoo 4, the textures will have more detail on the Voodoo 4. And this is Dragon, also running at 1024 by 768 another dark 3D game, 32-bit uh, colors. I don't believe this runs at 60 FPS, but it is still fairly playable. If you want that silky smooth, 60 FPS locked experience, tried at 800 by 600. So guys, let's summarize this video. Looking at everything I've seen and spending a few days with this video card, I agree, the Voodoo 4 is what the Voodoo 3 should have been from the get-go. So it adds uh, support for 32-bit colors, it supports high resolution textures, it has more video or memory, the performance is good enough in most games and it has the support for the Glide API which a lot of games can take advantage of and look maybe nicer or even run a little bit better. And the, uh, in my opinion, killer feature of the Voodoo 4 is the support for more modern AGP systems. It is compatible with the AGP 1.5 volt slot and this lets you build a really cool time machine for games uh, from the early Windows 98 uh, era, so to speak, with support for Glide. And that is really where this video card shines. If you have a Pentium 3, you might as well just use a Voodoo 3. Although the Voodoo 4 can do 32-bit colors, in a lot of games you're going to be struggling to see a noticeable difference. Also when enabling 32-bit colors on the Voodoo 4, the performance will also be a little bit less. Overall, the performance is sufficient for games at 800 by 600 or even 1024 by 768 pixels. So it depends on how old the game's game is and what sort of performance you're looking for. Some of the more modern games, probably 800 by 600, whereas um, older games, 1024 by 768. And if they're really old, you can play them at 1600 by 1200. The full screen anti-aliasing is also a nice bonus. If you're playing older games that have a fixed resolution of 640x480 or 800 by 600 um, this will really clean up the image, gets rid of jaggies and yeah, makes those old games look a little bit nicer. The Voodoo 4 also has excellent VGA output, a sharp and clear image, good compatibility with old games. Everyone made sure that their games work with a 3DFX Voodoo card. So that's, um, yeah, definitely something cool to experience when you're downloading old demos that haven't been patched. They always work in a Voodoo card, whereas on a more modern GeForce 2, you might be running into some issues. DOS performance is also brilliant. However, I feel if you're using this card for DOS gaming, that is really a little bit of a waste. Uh, this card is really for Windows 98 3D gaming, specifically anything with the Glide API. And finally, it's all good and well to be able to recommend such a card. 
Unfortunately, the Voodoo 4 4500 is not easy to find and it's also not going to be cheap. It's definitely a collector's item. Also, I don't see many using the Voodoo 4 in their retro machines. It's often either the Voodoo 3 or the Voodoo 5 5500. The Voodoo 4 doesn't seem to be getting a lot of love, but maybe this video changes things because it is compa compatible with more modern systems. So um, the uh, idea of building a time machine with newer parts is slowly um, becoming more popular. So if that's something that interests you, this is pretty much, I don't want to say the only, because there's likely an exception out there, but the Voodoo 4 4500 is the 3DFX Voodoo card to get if you want to use it in a more modern motherboard. So there you go, guys. We had a look at the Voodoo 4 4500. What an interesting card. Do let me know, what do you think of this video card? What do you think about 3DFX? Did you go with another brand, um, ATI or NVIDIA, maybe Matrox? Share your experiences down below. This is a really interesting time period where uh, performance just exploded from generation to generation, almost like an exponential growth. Uh, nothing like what we see today where uh, companies just release a product that's 20-30% faster and command a premium. Um, yeah, it was a lot more fun back in the day where you could... Uh, pick up double the performance for the same price uh, usually so yeah i do miss those times as always i read every comment i might not reply but i do read every comment if you found the video interesting give it a like subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and do let me know what other cool retro products do you want to see on the channel uh, i might have them already stashed away but uh, yeah i still keep an eye out on ebay and other places and if something is listed for good price I might just grab it. So thanks guys for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.